I was wishing I was by the seaside and then I heard the sound of seagulls. How fantastic is that? So I think they're all coming in. Because... Hi everybody, it's Wednesday the 3rd of April. Bit of a gloomy day, cloud-wise, but I'm about to go out into the garden while it isn't raining and to show you some of the uh, seeds I put in, see how they're getting on, because I haven't looked yet. It's gonna be a bit of a surprise to me. So, sweet peas I put in a few weeks ago. I wanna see how, how they're growing in my little cloche, because as I say, I haven't got a greenhouse, so it's in a little plastic covered container. So we'll have a look at those and have a look how, I can see there's daffodils coming out, so that's nice. So let's go. So here we are, get some wooden blocks on just in case squirrels and the like knock anything off. Ooh. Ooh, look at that, look at that. They're growing folks. And that's a broad bean, and that's a broad bean. So I put a couple of broad beans down here, and the rest are sweet peas. Broad bean, broad bean, sweet peas. Wow. So let's walk over. To my little sodden garden patch. I'm slipping on the grass as we speak, it's that wet. But the daff's coming out. Broad beans, look at that, they're growing. And at the back, I think they're my um, alliums that I've put in, which should be purple alliums for the summer, or at least May time. The solitary pink tulip has been joined by a burgundy one and another one about to come out. There's another burgundy, a few burgundy ones. So that's good. But you know, a few, you know, you pay all this money for bulbs and they, they don't seem to go that, you know, that far. You put clumps in and hope that you'll get colour. I think you need to spend thousands on bulbs to get a big display. <laughs> now the um, rhubarb looks a bit worse for wear. Something's had a good go at that. And I keep lifting it up off the ground. But again, those little broad beans looking healthy. The odd nibble here and there, but they're generally shooting up. And my roses I chopped right back, well below the window frame, and they are shooting up. Looking very uh, abundant. Oh, I'm pleased about that, so they will come out in June and they will look amazing. There's a Jubilee, David Austin Jubilee in there as well as um, there's another one that's not David Austin and it's huge pink blooms and that's grown up over the last few years really well. This is my border that normally comes out in uh, purple geranium here and pink geranium. Obviously I've got some bulbs I've put in that I'd forgotten about so they, I don't know what they're going to be. Can you see my coffee grinds? I didn't mush them in. I put a load in the other day and they're still there waiting for the rain to come. Big blobs of coffee grind. I need to bash those in. My two balls that I bought, the Buxus balls. They're not really big actually looking at them. You look, in the garden centre they look big and then you get them home and the scale of the garden means that they need to be bigger I think, but hey. Let's have a little wander over here, see what we've got growing. We've mown the lawn a few times, but it's absolutely soaking wet. I'm squelching as I go. 
I had to put this board here, this old black board, white board, chalk board, whatever you call them, to stop the badger and foxes from pushing through. I still think they get through, but I kept finding all my bricks and pieces of wood have been moved. It doesn't look particularly sightly, but I think once the foliage grows up, it won't be too bad. And look at all these. I'm not sure what half of this is growing. It's probably half weed, but you can never tell. I do like buttercups, so I don't mind them growing quite long into the ground. Bit of lavender there. My uh, white camellia is still in bud, yet to come out. Oh, it's pink. I thought it was white. Oh, it's pink. That's a late bloomer because all my others are out. I've been well out. This camellia's out. I've not noticed that. Oh, wow. These are like little buds, tiny ones. Must be a different variety. Gosh. It's about to come out. Look at the blossom on this rosemary. Hanbury Hall rhubarb, folks. The leaves are not eaten. They have a planting system, I think, like the Victorians, where they plant things next to each other so that uh, they don't get eaten. gifts are little lavender bags just um, putting two pieces of cloth face down and uh, I'll show you when I go downstairs actually these are what I've made and I've kept them upstairs so two pieces of cloth together a stitch around most of it leaving a gap and uh, these are some of the uh, little bags that I filled with this lovely organic lavender I can still smell it now in here uh, I get it from Hatton Hill, it's no collaboration, I'm not getting paid to say this, but I just organise it and order it online. This is a 500 gram bag. I had a couple of bags and I, I filled quite a lot. They're not cheap to make because cloth isn't um, cheap, is it? But I do like this linen. Well, you can see that. Uh, and I get these little 
boxes from which have which got patches in from our lovely linen company. I love her linens from Vanessa Arbuthnut. <clears throat> and uh, as I say, I'll link it below, which, you know, I, I don't, I'm not collaborating with her either. These are actually Liberty Fabrics, which I got patches off. I got some sections, I think, off eBay. And I just cut out a cardboard shape in the shape of a half fish after I folded over a piece of card and unfolded it. And I just made these little fish. And I say to people, you know, stick your kippers in your knicker drawer and um, save the moths from eating your pants. So there you go. And uh, lovely little ones. And I've given so many away. I've given tons, actually. I think I must have given 30 of these away. And uh, I do hope people appreciate it when they put it in their um, underwear drawer because uh, it still smells fragrant. And you can, in fact, refresh the smell. I've got, um, oh yeah, here it is. I buy Tisseron, Robert Tisseron, it's French. And he uh, set up a company in France which are essential oils, good quality essential oils. Now you can buy these sprays which have actually been watered down. This is jasmine, sandalwood and lavender. And you can just refresh the bags if you think the lavender after a while. I mean, I can still smell the lavender anyway. I've had these a year. Um, if you think that the lavender starts to fade in terms of smell. So that's refreshed it and it keeps the moths at bay. So I'll show you my box when I go downstairs because I've kept it near my sewing box. But those are they, quite sweet, aren't they? And very, very nice when you wrap them and give them a homemade present. I do like a homemade present. I'm not sure if other people, if people appreciate that. Hopefully they do, but at least it keeps them off at bay. Particularly in this house, because we do get them. Now I'm downstairs, I'm just going to show you the material from Vanessa Arbuthnot, which you can buy in boxes. They're off-cut boxes. I think they're in two sizes. And you get various squares in the box. Sometimes you get a bigger piece. In fact, this is quite a big piece on this one. And look at the quality of the linen. Um, these would be offcuts from her making bedspreads, curtains, covering sofas that she does. She does all sorts. And uh, I just love the variety of the uh, materials on offer. I've ordered that in a couple of meters, this lovely green. I've had this in grey on one of the chairs. I had a cushion covered. So, yeah, lovely, lovely little offcuts. And what to do with them? I've made lavender bags. I've made little pin cushions for people. And I've also done some place settings where you can put your cutlery on the plates if you want to do something different other than having um, cutlery either side of the plate set place setting. My machine plays up. I'm not a very good sewing machinist, but uh, I manage to get round. It always sort of loops sometimes, and I have to make sure that I've threaded the machine correctly, otherwise you get looping everywhere. But you can hand sew if you don't, haven't got a machine. Just go round, and there you have a little place setting. And I've got them different patterns on either side. If I haven't had enough material, some have got a different pattern. There you go, that one's a different pattern. What have we got here? Same one there. That's a yellowy one and a green stripe. <laughs> so you get the idea. What fun to do. And uh, doing these is less expensive than filling them up with lavender. Somebody said to me, don't fill them all with lavender. Put, put some other wadding in. But I like to have something fully scented and uh, well worth having. So that's why I've gone to the expense of using this uh, dried lavender for the lavender bags. So I hope you might, you, it might inspire you to do a little, get some material and do some little lavender bags or place settings or anything really. You could just make placemats and have them on the, um, the table as long as you could get the same amount of uh, material for each one. So, that's my little uh, sewing project over the years. Hope you enjoyed that. Here's that um, green material that I said I haven't used yet, but uh, I'd bought a couple of metres of. I might cover a footstool with this at some point. And I take it to a, an upholsterer that I know. I don't have it actually done at Vanessa Arbuthnot. She um, 
obviously quotes for various things that if you need settees, I think covering at her shop, she'll do that. But uh, if you've got individual things yourself, I think you just order the material and, and organize that to be upholstered. So that's a lovely green. And there's a different type of green stripe here, slightly different shade. I've got that in a, a big piece. And here I've made a patchwork quilt with some of the squares. I say quilt, a patchwork piece, which I actually put on a table outside um, in the summer. It's not brilliantly done. As I say, I'm not a seamstress, but I just got all the squares and uh, attached them together. Ironed them as I went. I mean, it's a bit crinkled now because I've just had it outside, but uh, it's a nice selection of all those pieces that you get in the box. And they're not all squares, obviously. That's a big piece, that pink, pink piece. So you just iron them and keep uh, attaching them as you go. Something for a rainy day.